All right, welcome to the June 28th Aries Working Group Call 2023. Um, a number of things on the agenda, slightly out of order, but I'll get that in uh, when we get into the topics. Um, we'll start with the uh, marketing group update, and then I've got a pile of RFCs, uh, PRs that I'd like to merge if we can get to that, and then we'll see what else we can get to. Um, this is a Linux Foundation meeting and a Hyperledger meeting, so the antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. It is not the 21st of June, so we've got to edit that. There we go. Um, please add your name to the list of attendees. I put it um, the link to this in chat. So um, feel free to add your name. Um, if anyone would like to introduce themselves or make announcements, the mic is now open for anyone to take that. Feel free to step up um, for introductions. Um, for those new to the community that want to introduce themselves and talk about what you're doing in this space, we welcome that. All right. Um, this announcement we're going to talk about in a bit, I believe. So I'll um, defer that until um, the discussion topics, if that's okay. Um, release statuses. Um, Aries Cloud Asian Python um, RC1 of release 082 has been released. Um, there is probably one more PR to merge into that. So we're holding off on an, a final 082 release. Um, we do have an issue in, with GitHub Actions related to a move to Python 3.9. Um, basically, we're in a situation where we've got a couple of integration tests that work fine on 3.6.3.7 um, and work fine on 3.8 and 3.9 locally, but, but hang on GitHub Actions 3.8 and 3.9 without any uh, feedback at this point. So we're uh, a couple of people that have been looking at it are, are at a loss. We're stuck. If anyone can help out on that, we'd really, really appreciate it. So um, let me know if you're able to help out or willing to help out. Um, um, we really need to get that one resolved. Um, we'll take some other actions, but uh, we need some new eyes on that one, which is it's just a weird one and fr very, very frustrating. Um, any other announcements about um, frameworks? or any other releases, release updates, and so on. A uh, couple of things to note, Aries Agent Test Harness um, failed last night to run. I don't think any of the tests ran or very few, so um, I'll be investigating that in a bit this morning. Um, so heads up on that. Um, Aries Mediator Service. Um, we'll talk a bit about this, but we really um, it would be super useful to have this updated with um, Socket Doc. So um, that would be a nice um, project if people are interested in or, and are looking for something to do. That's something noteworthy, Stephen. What's that? We uh, when you were asking about framework releases, we did integrate AFJ 040 oh, right. into yes. Bifold last week, so that's a huge yeah. win. Thanks to all the hard work from our friends at Animo, um, it seems to be working great. We've got one thing that we forgot to fix ourselves, but uh, yeah, it's working great. That's uh, that's of course got all the new shared components in it. We've we're not using Indie SDK anymore. We're using all the REST libraries like ask so the ASCAR to interact with the ledgers and the wallet and uh and on creds RS and all those other shared components we're using as well, which work great. That's awesome. Yeah, that was um the fact that it ran, you know, even with small issues that it ran on on a first go was amazing. So nice work on that. Thanks, Jason. All right, discussion topics. Um, Helen, Alex, do you guys want to take over the screen and talk about what you're doing or just talk about what you're doing? Um, we can just talk about what we're doing. That'd be fine. Okay. Um, 
So the first official meeting of the Aries Marketing Committee took place yesterday. This is, uh, I think we're going to meet just once monthly um, to talk about uh, updating uh, all things Aries uh, branding, messaging, et cetera. Um, so please, you know, starting off, please encourage anybody on your team who might be interested in this effort to join us. Um, the, it is on the, the groups IO like calendar reminders or whatever. So folks should, should get them all the information's there. Um, we also have a wiki page, uh, just if you click backwards a couple times, you'll see it. So anyways, it's, um, it's in the Aries, uh, you know, a, a branch of the Aries wiki. So all the information is there to join, please, uh, folks, uh, uh, join. <laughs> um, we will be inviting um, some speakers to come and, and clarify a few topics for us. Um, we're looking at sort of how to explain Aries externally to non people that are like not really familiar with the project or self sovereign identity or what a credential is like kind of you know how to ex how to explain things at a very kind of you know, basic fundamental values based way. And then also how to explain to those developers kind of who are in the open source community who are more familiar with it and that kind of thing. So kind of both sides, because I think that there's some, we, you know, we've sort of decided that there's some some things that one side would want and not the other and, and vice versa. Um, so Alex, I'll turn it over to Alex here in a minute to talk about the questionnaire, but we would love to get some feedback from the community uh, on this. It shouldn't just be coming from Alex and myself. And um, but uh, so we're hoping to get some some feedback in a simple questionnaire. So Alex, do you want to explain what that process is and what the goals are with that uh, effort? Yeah, thank you. I think you said most of it very well. So we're going to put a questionnaire out. If you see anything resembling a questionnaire or survey coming your way, please take the hopefully two and a half minutes it'll take to complete right there and then it'd be much appreciated awesome. what you're going to achieve is to is to flesh out understanding of the things that you guys know in your daily interaction by Aries so when uh, a person new to Aries comes along where do you point them and what are the most important things to be telling other people about Aries right now and maybe what are the challenges people are facing um when they hear about it or what's the resistance you're facing you're you're hearing about it and it sounds like a lot of things, but we're going to distill down some very targeted questions, probably a ranking question with a free text space. So you can just give us your thoughts and get the core proposition of Aries together, because it's still very clear that um, there's clarity about the lack of clarity that we that we need to get um, one solid core understanding of what the Aries proposition is right now. I know that's quite broad. And then we can specialize it in depending on the target audience. So for someone looking at this, it's this. If it's for execs, it's this. If it's for a developer onboarding to, to leverage it or contribute, it's this. So yeah, short version is, I think it'll, I think it'll be next week. But, um, time scale is subject to change. But if you see a questionnaire or survey cross your path, please, it'll be very quick to complete. And we'd really appreciate your input. Helen, any, any else to add to that? Um, I would just say one of those questions that will be on there, um, Alex sort of alluded to it, is um, any links to videos, meetups, recordings, blogs, papers, um, pages on your company's websites, like anything that you that has been created to explain Aries specifically, um, that you links that you send to people, maybe new developers come on your team and you send them you know, a handful of links, we're hoping to create kind of a, like a dashboard of sorts, a community bulletin board of like helpful resources. Um, so start or start getting those together, organizing those, um, because I think those will be um, really valuable to just as an ongoing effort to always kind of be updating, hey, we just had this cool event, I spoke at Identiverse, and this is the record, whatever, like, you know, we just just keep kind of ongoing, um, yeah, bulletin board of sorts with resources, uh, public facing resources. So start getting those links together, but we'll be organizing uh, and collecting those in that um, as well. So if you want to be featured on kind of the main Aries page with that, with your information, um, that's another kind of uh, added benefit to filling out the questionnaire. Excellent. There's quite a lot of those in the community, that's for sure. Having them organized would be very useful. Yeah, like there, we realize there's so much content that's already made by everybody on this call. <laughs> yeah. 
um, that let's, you know, let's maximize it and maximize visibility on it. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. All right. Any questions, comments for um, Alex or Helen? All right. Okay, next topic is ARIES RFCPRs. This is something we do uh, regularly, but haven't done in a while. So there's a long list of PRs um, in, the, um, in the community uh, to be reviewed. Um, have I got it right? Okay, you, people can see when I scan back and forth across my screens. Say yes. Between the tickets and the PowerPoint, yep. Yep, good, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to make sure uh, Zoom was working the way I thought. Let me um, do one thing before I can share this. Uh, change anything to an editor, copy link. And I'll put this in chat. Um, as well, in case anyone wants to go through it, and I'll add it to the um, really quickly. Should have done this before, sorry about that, but I want to get it into the notes so we don't lose it. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to play Let's Merge. I'm going to keep in this view because I've got links and things to show. Um, 789 add clarify. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is just list these off and then go through them. What I'd like to do is get to some sort of resolution on these. Um, and ideally we either merge them, close them, or identify um questions uh to go back. So um definitely need your feedback and and input as we do this. Um so looking forward to that is, is what I'm looking for. So 789 is adding a clarification to a to the thread RFC about the handling of an empty thread decorator. So basically, um, this is uh, a clarification. As noted, um, some frameworks may send over a tilde thread empty, um, which causes um, other frameworks possibly to crash, to, to throw an exception, or even to reject a message when, a, when an empty thread decorator comes in. Um, the simple message is don't do that. Don't send those over. If you're going to have an empty one, just don't even send it. But if, if someone does happen to send one over, um, the framework should be defensive in their handling of it, shouldn't reject the message, simply ignore the, the decorator. So that's the advice in that. So if I come over here to look at the change, um, it's it's a simple clarification saying it's not recommended. Um, may send an empty thread. Aries agents receiving a message with an empty thread must gracefully handle such a message. So that's the, the clarification. Any um, comments or any questions about merging this? We've had some conversation on this. A um, couple of suggestions of maybe to make, if you're going to put a thread in, then you have to put the THID, the thread ID in, um, but we don't want to make that a, a required as noted. So we think um, all of the uh, three of the frameworks now handle this, at least a, a VCX and Go, we're not sure of their status. Any concerns about merging this one? All right, I'm going to go ahead and merge this one. I think this is probably the only one we'll do on the fly because the rest will require updates, but we have at least accomplished that. Um, probably should have put in the notes um, that we what we did. Oops. Okay, um, I'll try to keep track of the status as we go. Um, 785 is another one that I put in based on um, activities in the um, in in the day to day work going on. Um, in this case, with bifold the bifold team, um, revise the well known goal codes Aries Rel and Aries Rel build. Again, a clarification 
Um, relation, rel is relationship in this case. So the Aries rel and Aries rel build indicate that um, the goal code is to build a relationship. Um, there was a line in the in the item to say these should not be used when just establishing a DIDCOM relationship, but that actually happens to be exactly what we need it for. Um, the change is just to remove that restriction, and since sometimes that is all you need. So let me get to that change, 785. Um, shoot, I can't see the where I've got things placed. I can't see it, so I'll just tweak that to say 785. So I stay on the, oh, I wasn't even helpful to do that, but anyway. Um, so uh, basically a minor change that says this should not be confused with building a DIDCOM channel. Um, and, and in fact, it could be used for uh, a DIDCOM connection itself is not the relationship, but would be used to carry out interactions to facilitate the relationship. And so basically this is saying this may be accomplished by establishing, updating, or deleting a DIDCOM message connection that provides uh, a secure communication channel. Basically saying it's okay to use this goal code for that purpose. It's not specifically banned. Any questions or concerns with that? All right, no comments. Are we okay to merge that one? Any objections? No objections? Okay. I'll mark that as to merge. Um, uh, then I wanted to throw out this. Um, basically these uh the goal codes is and and other events are needed to um deal with user experiences uh user experience um so the this one came about because of activities on the bc wallet um we need gold codes to um fine tune the um ux so that an event an event occurs that triggers some behavior in this case, um, lacking a goal code on the connections um, mechanism, uh, the BC wallet is now assuming that after a connection is established, something else will happen, um, either an offer of a credential or perhaps a, a presentation request. Um, in this case, this, this issue came up because there was no other action other than we just wanted to create a connection, but there was no events, no logic in there for the wallet to use in, in um, making that user experience um, distinction. So A, we need goal codes um, to help out in the user experience. So we need to define new goal codes and use them in places where they're enabled. Um, also brings especially the concept of done in an action so that we know when we're done. This is um, one sticking point that we've seen and we ask people to think about as they are developing wallets and things, which is once you get to um, an interaction with another party and you get to the end of it, how do you know you're at the end of it or, or that the other party is going to continue on with some other step? And so coming up with the concept of done is something um, that the, the BC wallet team has been thinking about and trying to figure out how to accomplish, particularly with goal codes. Um, any feedback on that would be of, of interest and any other experience in, in developing and tuning user experiences would be good. Okay. Leave a moment for anyone to comment and we'll jump to 784. I'll just show that one while we go. Um, this is a, a, an interesting one. Um, basically, as you can see, what it does is there's a table in the revocation notification V2 um, 
that says, hey, here's the type of revocation notification it is, the, the type of credential and, um, and examples of the format. Um, this one adds, in addition to Indian on creds, adds just plain and on creds and uses an example of a did as the, um, uh, as the mechanism, the identifier for the credential held by the, um, by the holder to say, oh, this credential, this specific credential has been, um, has been deleted or has been revoked, sorry. So that's the purpose of RFC 721. Um, it's, it's hard to tell whether this is a clarification or a minor update. I would lean towards this being a clarification. Um, note that this is still in the proposed, this 721 is still in the proposed status and the actual current revocation notification is 0183, which is a bit problematic, but that's for another day. Um, it kind of implies if you're adding another revocation format, it implies that you're going to have a different handler for it. You're going to you're going to get this message, and it's going to say a revocation format, and you're going to handle it with one way with an indie and on creds, and another way with an on creds. Um, so a bit of a clarification. I think it's mainly a clarification that those will will not appear. Um, since it's still unproposed, um, it doesn't really matter if this is a clarification or a minor update. Um, any comments on this one? Anyone run into this or or um, have an issue? Any um, concerns about merging this? I think this is a, a, a pretty straightforward one. It's a doesn't really matter since it's still in the proposed state, whether it's a clarification or a minor update. Any uh, concerns with merging this? No concerns with merging this, but a comment on the subject, at least. I think we should basically just treat this like the did spec has did method registries. When there's a change to the method registry, it doesn't change the did course. Right. Spec. Yeah. I think this is a similar change. So I, I think we're, I think we should be good with making these sorts of modifications without needing to rev the specification for the protocol. Thank you. Thanks. OK. All right. On to the next one, which is 780. Let me jump to that one so that I'm ready. Okay, we have an entire brand new uh, RFC um, with this one. Um, I think this one is pretty straightforward. We have had a few people review it. Basically, this says um, when you are issuing a credential, and um, particularly for images and perhaps other data types in those attributes that you're issuing, the recommendation is to use a data URL. Um, for those unfamiliar, um, that's, a, <laughs> that's an image. <laughs> um, that's not what I wanted to do. Just trying to click that button. Um, so a data URL looks like this, which is you've got an attribute called a photo and then the data URL looks like this. Um, data is a uh, hard coded. You've got the, the MIME type, uh, an optional semicolon and base 64 to say that the data is base 64 encoded, a comma, and then the actual data. And so this particular data URL is that image that I, I uh, 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 you saw slightly earlier on the screen. So this is a um, IETF RFC 2397. Um, so I think, and I think the, the uh, there's been a few people read through the RFC. Others are welcome, but um, I think it's ready to merge. Um, interestingly, another use of it is JSON. You can actually just put um, in as the data type is JSON and either uh, base 64 or not, um, but that would help in places where, for example, 
um, in a non-creds where you want to have an array, um, you cannot have an array in a non-creds. Um, so not, not a valid, uh, not, you, you can't do that because of how the non-creds signature works. So you can't have an array of data elements, but you could have a single attribute that is the array. Um, and this would give an indicator for a holder to say, oh, by the way, this is, is JSON data, and they might have a chance at being able to display it in a reasonable way rather than just dumping a bunch of JSON on the screen. So lots of flexibility in there. There was a discussion about whether this is an ARIES level or should be a credential formats um, issue at the, at, at the specification level of credential formats, like in non-creds or the W3C VC format. Um, since those looks like I had a uh, since those do not deal with um, pretty much don't deal with the data. I don't think it's appropriate personally that that those go in the anon creds. You can put whatever you want. Um, uh, those uh, anon creds or W three C doesn't care what kind of data or 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 the format of the data you put in the attribute. Um, so it, it's really up to you. Um, it just makes things a whole lot more flexible and easier to use, easier for things like holders to be able to display data if a data URL is used, particularly for that photo use case. I think that's one that's going to come up a lot and needs to be there. Uh, any comments um, other than Colton's comments in the chat about this one? Anyone want to say anything about it? Any objections to this being merged? And that could be you just want to be able to read it before it gets merged to make sure that the RFC is complete. I have to put these in capitals. Okay, we're going to go with that. Um, 768 is the proposed legacy peer did method. So I'll jump over to here. Um, not going to be as easy to do this one, but let's see if I can just get rid of that. And 768 and see what the changes are. So this is, um, was proposed as a way to deal with unqualified um unqualified uh dids using uh, uh sorry yeah unqualified dids that are being used in um peer to peer relationships basically in didcom um we since have um uh updated and uh should this should not be merged the latest solution is we would adopt did peer 2 and did peer 3 and transform unqualified dids, which is what is talked about in this uh, method, into did peer two and then subsequently into did peer three. So in code, the did doc that was shared in the un as the unqualified did, and then transition uh, encode that as a did peer two, and then subsequently encode that um, peer to two into um, a did peer three. Um, since we already have the did doc. So um, I think this one is um, to be canceled. Any objections to canceling this one? Somebody make a comment just for the fun of it. Mm, not even that. Comment. Ah, perfect. 755. Um, this is a very large one, um, one that I think is now ready to merge, um, one that I've created. <laughs> so, um, and I've done a few presentations on this one. Um, so, um, 
the background for people who have not heard, but I've talked about it lots, is um, OCA is a mecha OCA for Aries uses um, and the overlays capture architecture specification OCA in a way that allows us to make credentials beautiful by adding multilingual support and issuer branding to the display of credentials, um, which is particularly useful in um, holders um, in wallets and things. So this has been um, incubating for a very long time and we've been making minor adjustments as we've gone along. I've given updates, um, presentations on what uh, updates have been made as um, for things we've learned while implementing it. And I'll, I'll talk um, down at the bottom here. Since the last time I presented this and we talked about it, only two changes have been made. Um, the addition of a display of a stacked view in the style guide itself. So that was assumed, but not actually displayed in the style guide. So that is now there. And we've added a data element called watermark um, to the meta overlay. And that is used in particular for when um, showing a non-production um, credential, which um, for developers happens a lot. Um, so putting a watermark on so uh, the difference can uh, a difference can be seen between a a um, production and non-production um, credential in a wallet. Um, other work, excuse me, that's gone on is um, Aries Bifold now has an MPM model that is published on, on um, uh, published out on the NPM repo called Hyperledger slash Aries OCA that implements the um, pulling in of a uh, an OCA bundle for a given credential and and um, grabbing the data and using that data for the display. And there's also a repository um, created in BC Gov called Aries OCA bundles, which um, implements a, a, a way to publish um, OCA bundles. Anyone can submit a PR um, of an OCA bundle with appropriate data associated with it. That data gets humanly verified, gets checked out. And as long as the, the you know, the, the rules are followed that it is actually an OCA bundle and that the bundle points to existing identifiers um, it will get merged and anyone can use this as they wish. Um, so with all that, um, are we able to merge this? Any objections to merging the OCA for Aries and the seven, and it comes along with a RFC 756 OCA for Aries style guide. So both RFCs are included in this PR. I'm not hearing objections. Anyone want to comment on this whole idea, the lunacy of it? I'm going to mark it. Great. And I think we're we're also thinking about trying to make this work for the web. So we had a conversation at our last bifold um, user group meeting because we want to make like this this will this package will work in in bifold so react native but we also yeah. want to see about adding support for the web so that if you're making something like traction or your own uh, thing you can have the same look and feel that you would get in the wallet so you can uh, understand how it's going to look when you uh, release your credential if you've got any interest in that feel free to find us in the bifold channel akif would be championing championing that uh, endeavor i'm just going to show off the oca explorer but i don't have it Andy, um, but but it is an example uh, in this um, repository. Uh, we have a published uh, GitHub pages that displays it. Okay, that is to be merged, which makes for an easy next one, um, which is 740. Um, I've just, so 740 is an update of the README of the Overlays Capture Architecture RFC 013. Um, basically on that one, let me jump to that one.
Um, whoa, that doesn't look right. Or is it, sorry about this. Uh, oh, no, nope. there it is. So this, um, so there is a RFC overlays. Um, RFC 13 is called overlays. And basically what this um, RFP or RFC was is a definition, an early specification of OCA. Since then, the specification has been moved into um, the Human Colossus Foundation, um, has its own spec, has its own repository, has its own working group. Um, so the fact that we've got an early version of, of the OCA spec in ARIES does not make a whole lot of sense. So as part of the um, previous one of 755 and with agreement of Paul is that I basically have updated uh, RFC 13 to say retire. And uh, so uh, I, there's no need to merge this PR um, and we can just close it since, since the update does not make sense. The, the specification is published elsewhere. Any objections to merging this and retiring this? All right. I believe that is the last one of the easy ones for me. Hey, I got a question on that last one, Stephen. What does yeah. it mean to be moving it into the o uh, Human Colossus Foundation? Um, so OCA, this one was written in 2019. This RFC 13, as you can tell, it's very, very new. Um, since then, although um, this was there um, as, a, as, a, as an RFC that was proposed, it basically was merged as a proposed but never updated um, or, or never moved to a higher status. Um, Paul Knowles and um, collaborators then took the entire specification and just opened a new specification at Human Colossus Foundation. And that's where the, um, the OCA spec resides. And we've got pointers to that in the OCA for ARIES um, PR in this one. And we've got in the, in the where we retire 13, we also point to this work has been moved to that organization in that repository. Got it. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, next one is um, a, a new RFC that adds push notifications as Expo protocol. So there is, uh, this is mobile specific um, push notifications between a mediator and mobile wallets to say, hey, I've got a message for you. Um, there's some administrative work if we do want to merge this one. Um, and there was a question raised by uh, by Sam that has not been answered. Um, this is 745. Um, but other than that, I am not qualified to comment on this one. And, and so would suggest anyone with um, that expertise take a look at this and, and add a comment on this. Um, this does uh, supplement 699 and 734, which are other forms of push notification, um, FCM and APNS. Again, I'm not, don't know enough about it, so I, I can't comment on this. Can anyone, has anyone looked at this, um, thinks uh, this is ready to merge? It looks complete to me, and so I'd be happy to merge it. Um, as a proposed. Uh, this is Tim here. I haven't applied, I haven't actually read this, but just a thought that jumps to my head and probably maybe, maybe um, um, not correct, but it, it, um, for an RFC, like this is technology specific. Like I know, yeah. You know, Expo versus Azure versus Firebase versus, yep. I just wonder if there should be a not, I don't know if, I don't know if it can be, but more, more agnostic to, um, or, or, yeah. or it's okay to have a technology specific RFC. So it's really open yeah. question. Yep. Has, has anyone implemented notifications? Uh, 
sort of, but not in this, uh, not using this protocol. What what did uh, you do? Uh, we were just adding a metadata property to the didcom messages uh, that would say if it was read or not, and then checking that. It was kind of, it was not a very good way. Oh, to I see what you mean, yeah. This is more specifically for push notifications for a mobile app, um, as opposed to the messaging. So uh, for instance, when the mobile app is not connected to the mediator directly, then the mediator can push some form of notification to the mobile app yeah. uh, while the app is offline. Yeah. Again. Okay. Um, I think the recommendation here would be to um, see if we can get a session um, at an upcoming meeting to um, to discuss notifications and and where we are with this, and have somebody who knows what they're talking about lead that discussion. So we'll see what we can do about that. Yeah, and the comment about um, the different types of protocols with like Firebase, et cetera, makes me wonder if, um, I, I don't know if there is, but if there should be a more generalized um, method for, or like RFC for push notifications that allows for the different mechanisms out there to be implemented. Yeah. This is a matter of interest. How come there's four or, or there's three? Um, I would have expected to see. So there's Expo, FCM, and and that that other one, APNS. Um, how come three when there's only two mobile operating systems? Well, Expo is their own. Uh, that's not. Um, that's, ah, okay. That's what I'm saying. That's part of. Um, that's part of React Native. That's an Expo Native um, solution. Okay. And does it cover both OSs? I I believe so. As does as does Firebase, and maybe Expo calls the other ones. I'm not sure. I mean, Firebase right. is universal. Azure is universal, um, and there's others out there. But those those are okay. the most popular. I've never really looked at the Expo implementation, though. Yeah. I think most of the world uses Firebase. And you can also use the you can also use the native. Like if you just wanted to push notifications for Apple, then you could just do that um, as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Well, yeah, let's do this one as well. I want to get to the end of this. We've, we've done almost enough. We're almost to the end. Um, 7.44 is um, adding a timing capability to the mediator. Um, anyone with mediator experience that's, that's dug into this, basically this is saying um, how long a recipient is willing to wait to receive messages as they are arriving. So the, the generic... Um, pickup protocol says, give me M messages that are queued, you know, whatever messages are queued up to a maximum of M. Um, and then the mediator would say, oh, I've got some, so I'll, I'll, I'll send those across. What this adds is if there's less than M, then I'm willing to wait N milliseconds for more messages before, um, before sending. So if you've got none in the queue, I'm still going to wait you know, 3,000 milliseconds to see if more arrive because as a holder, I'm expecting more to be coming. Or if there's 10 in the queue and I request 20, then wait some seconds to see if more messages arrive. Um, I, I don't know the utility of this. Um, happy to see it merge since it's an optional one and uh, there is an implementation and it was found to be useful. Does anyone else know if this is a useful feature? Just from my perspective, this seems 
more applicable to when the agent is connected over HTTP rather than say WebSockets, and yeah, basically tell, informing the mediator how long is my connection timeout. Yeah. So it's a more graceful way of doing it rather than just having it cut. Okay. Yeah, and the client's basically saying, please give me a bigger batch if possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, might help at minimum to have, have that. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip past a couple of these. The rest of these, so we've got a few more to do, uh, perhaps next week, just to finalize these. Um, other PRs are very old. I'm going to try to get them just closed because I just think they're too old to, to look at. And last thing I want to do is a pitch for a proper RFC website. So this is something that could go into the marketing. Um, so um, Alex uh, might be useful here. Um, I, I spent some time doing the akapai.org website, um, basically using MDocs uh, material as a default. My process was just to create a new repo, add welcome content for the repo, and then a script that copies all um, uh, relevant content um, in the Akapai, it was every MD file into an appropriate structure on the new um, static website. And uh, then just a manual process to update that website. Nice to have with uh, GitHub Actions. So um, the categories would be something like welcome, an administrative page to say, you know, the life cycle of RFCs and how to submit an RFC and what the process is. Um, but then this is the really important AIP one would actually have a list on a clickable website, not a GitHub repository with a bunch of readmes, but you could actually go through and see all of the AIP one and AIP two um, um, in a nice published form as well as, you know, a column of other RFCs that are, you know, in different, in, in proposed states. So I think this would be a much better way for people to um, be greeted by Aries RFC and be a much more comfortable way for them to read them. So I throw that out there. I've got it on my to-do list. If anyone wants to um, help out or um, work on that with me, um, let me know. I'm more likely to get it done if, if someone's pushing me on it. So um, I'll throw that out there. And with that, we'll end this part of the discussion with just a couple of minutes left because I wanted to hit a couple of other things. Any final comments from anyone on that section? Awesome. Okay. Um, mediators, um, we did have the presentation last week. Lots of good stuff in there. Um, uh, Indicio has open sourced socket doc, awesome work on that, which I think this is a, a total game changer in how to construct scalable uh, mediators. Um, so I think this is really great work. Um, so mediator um, basically turns it from being the, the, me the mediator from having to worry about web sockets to simply having to worry about sending and receiving HTTP messages. So much easier to um, make completely scalable. So um, next will be, um, as I mentioned, uh, Aries um, Mediator Service, AMS, um, be updated to use Socket Doc. I think that's the way to go. So um, we'll see how that goes if, if people are doing that work or or just uh, or what becomes available for that. But I did want to highlight that Indicio has open sourced that repository that we talked about last week. Encourage people to um address it or, or to use it um last topic i wanted to go over and alex and uh andrea i'm glad you're here um there's uh, like to uh, highlight 
two things that have been commented in the did peer spec. So two um, issues were raised. So one of them was um, er errors in the example. So a clarification is needed. Um, the specification um, is about hex encoded SHA-256. Um, in attempting to do that, in implementing did peer three in um, ARIES VCX, this issue was um, raised. So really good if we could take a look at that. Um, as well, uh, Daniel Bloom posted a notice of a couple of inconsistencies in did peer three that I think should be resolved. Um, I thought Daniel merged this a little quickly. We explained why, but I didn't think we had quite enough review. So um, it's not surprising to me, and I think it's not a problem for us to do that. But basically, the, the simple is um, removing the dot because the other methods don't have a dot in uh, in between the um, three of the, the method number and the rest of the did. And then um, use multi-base, multi-codec hash so we know exactly what hash algorithm is being used um, and uh, hash algorithm and, and base encoding of the data. So again, I think those are, are two wise changes to put in. Um, Alex, you're here, or Daniel Bloom, you're here. If, if one of you could put those in, I, I was gonna do it, but I really don't know enough about um, the multi-base and multi-codec hash to explain it. Um, I did notice that there are multiple SHA-256 um, algorithms, and so I think we have to be more specific of which one, and I wonder if that's related to the um, other issue that was raised. So I throw that out um, to others. I see Daniel's not on the call anymore. He was on earlier, but um, so he raised at it. Alex, thank you for taking a look at that. That'd be awesome. I'd really like to get that as clean as possible and keep that updated. I would note that um, one of the PRs that was recently merged in the did peer spec was to add, was to remove the um, big red text warning text. Um, <clears throat> so that has been removed from the specification. Um, there used to be some warning text saying, yeah, should you really be using this? And, and we really think this has um, the did peer um, spec and the did peer method has a lot of valid use. Um, so we did not like the fact that there was this um, kind of ugly red text where no replacement was particularly available at the time. So really good to see this, that update made. And with that, um, that covers all I wanted to go over. Um, oh, highlighting one once more, I went through this, added a couple of issues. Timo posted a migration doc for unqualified DIDs, moving them to qualified DIDs. Um, again, strongly encourage people to read through that, take a look at it, add comments um, via issues um, into uh, about the document. Um, I, I found it a, a very useful one and, and um, good one to review. And with that, I will stop sharing and give anyone a last second to respond, make any comments, and then we'll wrap the meeting up. Excellent. Have a great day. Great rest of your day, depending on where you are. Take care, folks. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Stephen. Thanks, everybody.